you've got to be up and pray. It's time for the Word, y'all. Amen. God's Word is so powerful that it'll change you, it'll mold you, it'll make you. There's one thing I can tell you. It's God's Word that'll change you. Mine, if I don't line up with God's Word, it ain't going to do you no good. Man's Word don't mean nothing. God's Word means everything. Can I get an amen up in here? His Word will change you. That's why we are a Word church. We believe in the Word of God. I believe you've got to have the Word of God. You've got to have the Spirit of God. You've got to have a balance. If you've got all Word and no Spirit, you don't have nothing. If you've got all Spirit and no Word, you don't have anything. You've got to have the Word of God and you've got to have the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God waters the Word. He, may, he brings life to the Word. And He's got to have something to work with. Can I get an amen up in here? See, if you don't got no Word, the Spirit of God ain't got nothing to work with. And if you've got Word and no Spirit, nothing's going to grow. So there has to be a balance. And we need God's Word and we need His Spirit. Amen. So praise God for that. That's not the message today. That's a little extra stuff. I want you to let you never say this. Is there not a cause? Is there not a cause? Woo, come on now. Is there not a cause? Come on, say it to somebody. Come on, guys up here. Come on, y'all. Look at you and say, is there not a cause? Let me tell you, there's a cause for everything you do. There's a cause. People might not understand it. People might not know what you're doing. People might try to stop you. Come on, especially your own brothers or sisters or spouse or whatever. But I'm telling you, is there not a cause? You are here today because of a cause. You do things because of a cause. Somebody help me. Oh, we're doing something with this. Amen. Father, I thank you right now for your goodness, your mercy, your grace, your awesome power. Lord, I ask right now that you would anoint this vessel. Use me for your glory. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. Father, fill every soul, every vessel in this house with the Spirit of the living God. Let your word go forth. Let the Spirit of God make it life in the name of Jesus. Father, we praise you. We thank you. We give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor here today. Father, I thank you for drawing Justin back by your Spirit. I thank you, Lord God, that he's come back home. The prodigal has returned, Father. I praise you. Father, Lord God, I thank you. I thank you for that little daughter that raised her hand for salvation today, Father. I thank you for saving her soul in the name of Jesus. And Father, we give you the praise and the glory and the honor. Come on, church. Give God another kind of praise for you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah. Glory to you, Lord. You can be seated. Praise the Lord. Y'all make sure y'all tell everybody on YouTube now. Praise God. That's a blessing that Wendy has done. And they can see us worldwide. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Is there not a cause? I want you to open up your Bibles to 1 Samuel chapter 17. 1 Samuel chapter 17. We're going to be looking at a lot of scripture today. We're going to be going through some scripture. And we'll probably start around 26 or 27. But I want you to see the scenario that we have right here. Here is a, a little lad named David. He's, he's a keeper of a sheep. He's like a little shepherd boy. He watches his father's sheep. His brothers are out fighting a war. They're out fighting the battle. Yes. How many ever been in a battle? Yes. Now, Lord, if you're saved, born again, you in a battle. I'm here to tell you right now. But anyway, here, his brothers are out fighting the battle. So his daddy tells David, says, David, I want you to go give your brothers something to eat. Carry some food out there to your, to your brothers. All right? Now here he has to leave his sheep, and he leaves his sheep with a keeper. And he's, he's going to take some food to his brothers. Now his brothers know old David. You know, they know how rambunctious he is. And they know that he likes to get into things. I, pray, God, I love it when somebody likes to get into something. I like it when somebody like that to do something. Don't just sit down and not do anything. So here's David, and you know, he's rambunctious. He wants to go, and I'm sure he wants to see the battle. But there's something different about David. See, something happened to David many years back. Somebody came and knocking on Jesse's door one day. Somebody held me up in here. And one of those said, I need to look at you. I need to look at your boys. Jesse, let me see your, your boys. Let me, I, I want to look at your boys. And though Jesse brought out all of his boys except for one. Come on. Samuel the prophet is in town. Samuel has got a cause for being at Jesse's house. But the cause he's there is to anoint somebody. To be the next king of Israel. Somebody help me up in here now. But the one he's to anoint is not even there. 
So the man of God, Samuel, got to, whoa, wait a minute here, Jesse, this can't be all your boys. You've got to have another one somewhere because God don't tell me to do something. Come on, that ain't right. And I done looked at these boys and God ain't told me, hey, he, he, did, he told me not to know these boys. This ain't, this ain't the one. There's one that's hiding somewhere. Jesse, where's he at? See, you might have been hiding for a while until God gets a hold of you. Come on, church, my Lord. You might be here. You might think nobody even thinking about you. But I'm telling you, God's thinking about you. God's got his eyes on you. You ain't, come on, you ain't hid where God don't know where you're at. He's got you hid. He's got you in a place. So here comes Samuel. Jesse says, yeah, I got one more. He's young. He's too young. He's, he's young. He, he's just watching the sheep. Go get it. So Jesse sends for his boy. Youngest boy he's got. This is amazing. I'm preaching this day. And here's my youngest boy right here. And he gives his heart to the Lord. Ain't that all? I mean, come back to the Lord. He's been saved. He's been back. Ain't this amazing, y'all? But that anointing. When, when Jesse, when, when Samuel sees David, he knows that's the one. He takes out that oil and he anoints him. Amen. Amen. He's been anointed, y'all. It's a symbol of being anointed by the Holy Ghost. Amen. It's a picture of the Spirit of God being poured out upon David. Yes. Because in the future, my Lord, in the future, Amen. he's going to be anointed. He's going to be king of Israel. Amen. What a Amen. powerful anointing that must have been. Yes. Yes. Amen. Come on, think about that. Amen. So here's the scenario. He's been anointed. Yes. Many years later, yes. Israel is in a battle. The Philistines are gathered around. They got a big old soldier. <laughs> they got a big old man. That's right. His name is Goliath. He's a giant of men. This man is a giant, church. Somebody help me up in here. He's a big man. Yeah. He's so big that they ain't nobody. I mean, nobody in Israel's army, not even the king himself, will face that giant. Come on, church. I'm trying to give you something spiritual right now. There's some giants in your life that you got to face. You can't run. You can't hide. You got to stand. Come on. And you can stand because there's a man of God. His name is Jesus. He's the son of God. He's the he's lamb of God. He anointed you with the spirit of living God. And I don't care what kind. You can defeat him. That's the problem with the church today. They know the giant is there, but they don't want to face him. They want to do just like the armies of Israel are doing. Nobody wants to face that giant. He's too big. I promise you there's nothing too big for God. Somebody, there's nothing too big when God has his hand on you, when that anointing is flowing through you. There's no devil in hell that's too big for God. Somebody help me up in here. Come on, church. And here comes a little shepherd boy. A little shepherd boy. Good Lord, it don't take but a word from the Lord, y'all. Come on, my Lord. Here comes a shepherd boy and all this army. He said, oh, no, we ain't done. And David, he comes on the scene. Now, I've got to read some scripture to you here. I want to read you this. Because this is important. David, in verse 26, David spoke to the men who stood by him saying, What shall be done to the man who kills the Philistine? And takes away the reproach from Israel. For who is this? Now this is what he says. Here's the powerful word. He says, For who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Who is this Philistine? Listen to what he said. Who defies the armies of the living God? Who does he think he is coming against God's army? He ain't nothing. Who does the devil think he is coming against God's church? He ain't nothing. The Bible says the gates of hell shall not prevail. Somebody help me up in here now. you got to see this. You've got an anointing on your life. It don't matter. You've got to learn to stand. Y'all, we're going to be here while they, I'm telling you, Lord, I can't help it. We have got to learn to stand. The enemy is going to fight. The Goliath, the giant is going to stand up in your life. He is going to try to stop you. Don't run from him. You got no protection. Yeah. Stand. I'll show you how if you stand, God, I'll fight the battle for you. Somebody help me here now. Yeah. Now he says, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? He's defying the armies of the living God. The people asked him and said to this matter, so shall it be done for the man who kills him. In other words, there's some great things in store for you if you'll face the giant. Face, face. 
There's some great things God wants to do in your life if you'll learn to stand. Yes. Amen. Come on, you can't hide under a shadow. You can't hide under a rock. Amen. Unless his name is Jesus and he's a rock of your salvation. Somebody help me now. Woo! Somebody, come on now, come on. Look at this. He says here, and, uh, and his older brother Eliab said this, the eldest brother, heard, heard when David was speaking to the men, and he said, his, uh, ain't just something, his brother's getting mad. His brother's getting jealous. Now, one reason I think he's getting mad and jealous is because he remembers many years back when Samuel the prophet anointed David. Because God had a purpose. Come on. He had a purpose for that young boy, for David. He remembers that. He's, he's looking back, man. He's thinking about that. And then listen to what he says, though. He says, why did you come here? With whom have you left them few sheep in the wilderness? Really making fun of this boy. Who did you leave your little sheep with? What you doing here? Now here it is, y'all. Here's the title of the message right here. He says, he says I know, well, first of all, he says, I know your pride, the knowledge of your heart. You're coming down so you can just see the battle. David, you just want to see what's going on. Let me tell y'all this. He wanted to do more than just see what's going on. He wants to be in the midst of it. He wants to be on the, right, on the front line, church. Come on. He wants to be in a place where, hey, wait a minute, this he ain't gonna be doing this no more. The devil got to stop. Y'all, I'm telling y'all, y'all need to tell the devil to stop. Come on, I don't care what you need to tell that giant to stop. He's got no authority in your life, in your house. Come on. You got to stop him. Stand. Now here it is. He says, and David said this. What what have I done now? Is there not a cause? Amen. There it is, y'all. Is there not a cause? In other words, he said, there's a reason I'm here. Part of the reason is I got y'all some food, so you really ought to shut up. <laughs> and it's something you can't do enough for people, can you? Even your own brother. I got y'all some food, and you're still coming off on me. Good Lord, think about that. Got him some food, and they're still coming off on him. But that was just a little purpose. That was just a little thing. The bigger cause, the bigger cause, come on, church. Is there's a giant that's got to be whipped. Woo! Somebody help me hear that. There's a giant that's got to come down. There's a giant that's going to have to lose his life. There's a giant that's got to stop messing with God's people. Mm. Let me say that again. There's a giant that's got to stop messing with God's people. And if ain't nobody else going to take a stand, I'm taking a stand, church. Somebody help me up in here. We got to stand against the wiles of the enemy. You got to stand. When you've done all the stand, just stand and let the spirit of the living God rise up within you. Let God begin to fight your battles. Let you see those devils start cowering instead of you. Yeah, that's right. That's right. The devils need to flee, not you. Woo! Now, Lord, you got something they don't got. Uh -huh. that's right. Oh, listen to you. You got two things they don't got. You got the word of God on the inside of you, and you got the spirit of God making it life. Now, Lord, there ain't no devil in hell got that. What you got? victorious. That's right. We got God's word. We got his promises and we got the spirit of the living God on the inside of us. Good Lord, what a blessing. Now listen to this. He, David turned from him toward another and he began to speak that. What he was speaking was this. He, he, he was speaking uh, up here where he says, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? He was speaking that, y'all. He's speaking it out. See, there's something about speaking out God's word, what he says. Yes. Who does this giant think he is? Yes. He's speaking it. Well, guess what? As he begins to speak, the word's getting around. Yes. People are hearing it. Yes. And all of a sudden, the king hears it. Yes. It's in your Bible right here. Come on, the king hears it. Oh, Lord, I promise you, if you begin to speak to that giant, your king's going to hear it. Hallelujah. Yes. I'm talking about the king of kings and the Lord of Lords. Now this ain't no king of kings and mortal lords. This is the king of Israel. He's a mere man. And he's a man who's really fearful of this giant. And you've got a little boy who ain't. Now, listen to this in verse 32. David goes to the king because the king tells David to come on. Okay, you can see it in verse 32. I'm going to paraphrase something, but you can read it. He said, let no man's heart fail because of this giant. Now listen, this is what David is saying to the king of Israel who is fearful. The king saw, he, he won't even face the giant. He, David says, your servant, 
Saul, I'm your servant. I'm going to go out and face that giant. I'll do it. Can you imagine the little lad? I praise God for that child. Out of the mouth of, out of, the mouth of babes. I dare just, come on. Mouth of babes, just believe what God says. That's right, amen. I wish God would give us a, a, a congregation of babies in Christ who just dare to believe what God says. Come on, church. Just dare to believe that God said it. Amen. See, you got to start out as a babe, start out as a babe. Just believe what God said. God said it. David is coming on a word, y'all. Now, listen, he's coming on a word. And he says, your servant will fight this Philistine. Now, listen to what Saul says to, to young David. He says, you are not able. Anybody ever heard that before? Yeah, I've heard that. You ain't able to do that. Yeah. Are you crazy? I told you, I've had my family tell me I was crazy. Yeah. You know how many people want to get a job at BMW and you thinking about leaving? I said, I ain't thinking about leaving. I am leaving. <laughs> Come on, church. I'm trying to show you something. I'm stepping out trusting God. I, I had my own family say, do you know how many people want a job there? Do you know how much money you're making? Do you know what you're fixing to do? I said, yeah, I know what I'm fixing to do. I'm fixing to do what God says to do. I can't listen to nobody. Come on. I got to listen to what God says to do. Amen. So they try, even the king here, Saul is trying to stop David. Now look at this, okay? I want you to see this. He says, you're not able to fight this Philistine because you are too young. David, you're too young. You have not been trained how to fight this giant. This giant, Goliath, has been a warrior all his life. This giant that you're fixing to face, come on, he wasn't born yesterday. He's more than 17 years old. He's been equipped. This giant, in other words, King said, this giant going to tear you to pieces. You are no match for this giant. Let me tell everybody up in here. We are no giant. We are no match for the devil. We're no match for the enemy. But what makes the difference? I'm talking about in my flesh. If I sit in my flesh and say, I'm going to fight your devil and I'm going to whoop you, guess what? I'm going to get my hiney and whooped all to pieces. But when I step back and say, listen, greater is he that's in me than he that is in this world. Devil, I don't got to fight you. It's the Spirit of God that's going to rise up and go to defeat you because God gave me a word. Come on, somebody help me for you. Because God has given you a word. Come on, he's giving you a word. And the Spirit of God rises up. See, David understands this because he's been anointed. Yes. Don't tell me you don't need to be anointed. Yes. Don't tell me we don't need the Spirit of God. You need to let that oil pour all over you. Praise God. Let, let the Spirit of God have your whole body. Yes. Every part of your body. Yes. Now let's look at this thing. Oh, I love this. Praise God. I can't have God the word. He says, you can't do it. David said this. He said, your servant kept the father's sheep. A lion came. A bear came. Come on. And took a lamb out of the flock. That's a true shepherd. That's a true shepherd when the enemy comes in and tries to snatch somebody out of the flock. That's right. A true shepherd ain't gonna run. A true shepherd ain't gonna cower and hide. A true shepherd is going to say, I got to find that lamb. Right. Somebody help me up in here. I got to find out what's going on here. Yeah. The enemy's trying to destroy, but he has no authority. That lamb don't belong to him. Right. Somebody help me up in there. Right. The lamb don't belong to him. The lamb belongs to me. God has put him under my care. Yeah, that's, right. that's what yeah. David is saying. So what does David do? He goes. As soon as that lamb is there, he goes after that enemy. Yes. And the Bible says you can look at it. He told Saul. He said, Saul, I grabbed that thing by the beard. Yeah. He grabbed the head of that lion by the beard and slew him. Yeah. Killed that little lion. Yeah. Yeah. Not by his own power, church. Come on. Right. By the anointing that was poured upon him, he killed that little lion. Yeah. He killed the bear. Yes, he did. Why? Because of that anointing. Because God has his hand on it. Church, I'm telling you right now, everybody in here, God has his hand on you if you're saved and born again. Yeah, he, God's got his hand on you. You're saved. You're cleansed by the blood. You've got the same power that was in Jesus as in you, the power of the Spirit of the living God. And the devil's been robbing some people. You've got to get back what he's taking. Somebody hit me up in here. you got to face it. you got to come on, stand it. Mm. Look at it. He says right here, 
I slew the lion and the bear. And then he says, this uncircumcised Philistine is nothing. That's right. He gonna come down too, church. Look at it. He says, this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them. Why? He has defied the armies of the living God. He's coming against somebody he got no business coming against. You cannot come against God and win. Let me say it again. You cannot come against God, His army, His servants, His children and win. You can't do it. You can fight. You can do whatever you want. You can do whatever you want. But He cannot defeat God's children, His people. And when he comes against this, he's coming against God. There's no devil in hell a match for God. Come on, y'all. Give God a clap of praise for me. Man. 37. David said this. Moreover. I like that moreover word. He says, the Lord who delivered me out of the paw of the lion, out of the paw of the bear, he's going to deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. Come on, church. See, David is not taking any glory or any credit. He said, God delivered me, and he's going to deliver me again. All i got to do is face it. I promise you, church, you just got to face your giant if you want deliverance. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Right. Come on. you got to face the giant if you want deliverance. That's right. You can't let the, Jennifer, you can't let the giant bring you down. you got to face the giant. You can't run. Come on, church. I'm trying to tell you something here. It don't do you no good to run. There's no, way, there's no way you can go. Now, look at this. Here's what I love. I, I mean, I love this right here. If you look, look at verse 38. Here's what Saul says in 38. Saul armed David with what? His arms. Good Lord, somebody help me up in here. The king says, David, he doesn't say you're too young. Now you ain't even got on the right clothes. If you're going to face this giant, put on my armor. The king says, I'm going to give you my armor so you'll have some protection so you can defeat that giant. I'm promising you, and I tell you this right now, man's armor won't do you no good. Amen. In fact, some people say, I'm going to be with you till the end. My gosh, where'd they go? I ain't saying that. <laughs> so you can't trust in what man says. You can't trust in man's armor. Come on, y'all. I'm telling you, they'll be there till the end. They'll go through thick, thick and thin. I've seen the thick come through, but when it gets thin, psh. See, the thick's all right. When it's just coming in, it's all right. Hunky door, hunky door. Gets thin, psh. Someone have me up in here. That's just everywhere. Come on, that just happens everywhere. What I'm trying to tell you, you can't trust in man's armor. Now, I love what David says, and you can read it. He did put it on. See, man's yoke is heavy. Man will yoke you down. He said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Somebody help me up with that. Man will yoke you down. He'll try to get you all dressed up, fixed up, so you can face whatever you're facing. But you see, we're, we're in a spiritual battle, church. That's right. You can put on all the physical stuff you want to. But there ain't no armor thick enough to keep the devil from penetrating that kind of armor. See, we're in the spiritual battle. You've got to have on some spiritual weapons. So when David had all the, the, all the king's armor on, he said, I ain't proved this. He said, I ain't proved this. I ain't never fought in this now. When I fought that line, I didn't have this on. That's right. on. See, you got to remember some of the past battles that you come through. Oh, <laughs> somebody out of that. Yeah. When somebody's trying to do something different in your life, you better wait a minute back there. Wait a minute now. I didn't have that on when I defeated when I killed that lion. I didn't have that on when I defeated a bear. I don't know if I need that on right now, King. Come on. He said, I ain't proved it. I ain't fought in these things. See, he began to peel it off. Yes, right. Woo! Woo! Yes. Now, Lord, when you peel some stuff off that man's trying to put on you, you can have liberty. Come on, y'all. I know people don't think you're supposed to come in here and shout and give God the praise, but you know what? I really don't care. I'm going to give him praise. I'm going to shout. I'm going to give him all the glory. In fact, we ought to stand up right now. Just give him a clap of praise. Come on. Come on. We're not going to just give him praise. Just give him glory. It don't matter, y'all. Come on. I want to praise you. I want to thank you. I want to give him all the glory, y'all. No matter how foolish it looks. You can see it, praise God. We all be about halfway there. Come on, y'all. People think, it, I mean, it's foolish. Don't let man yoke you down. 
The Bible says where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is what? Liberty. Liberty. Yes. Liberty. Yes. That means to shout, to dance, to praise, to yes. sing. Yes. Whatever yes. needs to be done, you do it. Amen. Yes. Now let's go a little bit further. Oh, Lord. Daddy, can you go in and get this out of my... If you don't mind, I've got something. Let me bring that out. Okay. They said, I cannot go with these things. That's what he says in verse 39. He says, I've not proved them. So what did they do? Kill them off. Now he's going to fight the way God wants him to fight. Come on, come on, Let me come tell on. you this right now. They go with plenty of spirit. When you're facing a giant, sometimes you just got to put down every book. Sometimes you just got to put down every opinion. Because they don't, nobody really knows that giant that you're facing but you. Come on. You, you know. And you know what God has said. And what, what is, so what I'm trying to tell you, you can't let anything else creep in. Kill it all off. Stand and listen to the Lord. There's one, one word you need to get. It's from the Lord to be in His Bible. It's right here. Come on. He'll give you a word. Put it off. Come on. And we know it. I'm, I'm not going to get on to the whole armor of God. We know about putting on the whole armor of God. Amen. Spiritual things that we can put on. I'm not even going there right now. I just want you to see he's got a word from the Lord. He's standing. Amen. Now look at this. He says he took his staff in his hand. This is important. I have to bring this staff out today. This was made by one of my sons for me. But anyway, David had his staff. Here's what I want you to see. The staff is a type of the word of God. And what's so important, if you'll go back and study history on the staffs, anybody who had a staff, they would write things on it. But they wouldn't just write anything now. Come on. They wrote the history of their life. Yes. Things that have happened. So what I'm trying to tell you, he's got his staff, he's got his history, hallelujah, in his hand. He's got his history where he says, oh, I remember right here where I wrote, uh, I killed the lion. I defeated the bear. Yes. Samuel anointed me. Yes. The prophet came and anointed me with oil. Yes. God said, I'm going to be the King in Israel. I yes, saw yes. oh, yes. He's got his word with him. He's got a word from the Lord with him. Amen. I think he already probably written on here. That are uncircumcised Philistines coming down. Woo. I believe he might have written on before he even got to the church. Because he has a word from the Lord. So he's got his word with him. And then it says this he chose five smooth. Stones. He got some stone. Now, that we know the number five is a number of what? Grace. He's got the word and he's got grace. Woo! Hallelujah! Somebody hit that here next. He's got God's word. He's got God's grace. He takes five stones out of the brook. I like to say he's got these five stones because Goliath had some brothers. There was five of them in all. Amen. And he had he had one for each, but after. Circumstances come about. I don't see the mother four popping up nowhere. I don't get somebody else. I don't want to get ahead, but I'm just telling you, God will prepare you for what you got to face. And a lot of times you'll face that first night, the mother giants ain't going to come nowhere near you. Oh, God, baby, you need to Come on, church. Get rid of the big one. Don't worry about his brothers when they come. Let them come when they come. They'll be defeated too. Can I get another amen? Yes. So he got his five smooth stones, took them out of the brook. I like to say this, y'all. Those stones remind me also of the word. That's right. That's sitting in the spirit of God in the brook and that water and that's yes. that water that's flowing, amen. Yes. That river of living water. He said, I go better will flow rivers of living water. I like to say this, everything you need is on the inside of you. Yes. Everything you need by the spirit of God is flowing on the inside yes. of you. All you gotta do is pull it out. Yes. He got those five stones and he got ready to face the life church. Look at it right here. He said he put him in a shepherd's bag, which he had, and he, he had to sling y'all of the sling down on the store in his hand. And he went to the Philistine. He went to face the giant. He's not waiting on, on, on Goliath to say anything else. He's not waiting on Goliath to come and meet him. He goes right out to the battle. Now I think about that sometimes. Y'all, there was many men in that army who had 40 and 50 and 60 years of experience fighting. And not a one of them is coming out. One young boy. Church, it don't take much. It takes one person ready 
not afraid, not scared to take a stand. Amen. Come on, take a stand. He comes up, he takes a stand, and when the first stand, you can look at it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Verse 42 says, when the first stand looked about, he saw David. He just standing. Why? Because he was a youth, ruddy, fair countenance. He's thinking, what in the world does this little old boy think he's going to do with me? <laughs> See, that's what the devil thinks about you and me sometimes. Yes. What does this run think he's going to do facing me? I'm going to take it down. Let me tell y'all, the enemy wants to take every one of you down. I'll say it again, get it in your spirit. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in this world. The devil is no match for the spirit of the living God. There is no comparison. No comparison. You got a word and the spirit. Put it on the inside of you. It's not even a fair battle, y'all. It's not a fair battle with what's on the inside of you. He's a defeated foe, y'all. Come on, the devil is a defeated foe. Now look at this thing. He, he don't even want, you know, the Philistine in verse 4, he said to David, Am I a dog? Am I a dog? You coming with your staff? He didn't know what was on that staff, did he? And the Philistine's cursing David by his what? God's. So the devil's not just cursing you. He doesn't curse God. And when you curse God, somebody done made a mistake. <laughs> this giant, he might have thought he was cursing a little young boy, but he was cursing God. He was cursing the very God that the air that this giant is breathing belongs to God. Oh, somebody help me. Amen. People curse what they don't even realize. That's right. He's cursing the very God that sustained his life right now. They don't even know it. Amen. He curses God. Now look at this thing. Now I'm over, man. I'm on 43. I think, okay. Yeah, 44. The flesh thing said, David, come to me. I'm going to give you flesh to the fowls of the air and to the beast of the field. And here's what he said to David. He said, come on to me because I'm going to kill you. That's what, he, that's what he's saying. You're going to be dead. In the next few minutes, you're going to be dead. Let me tell you all this. <clears throat> whatever the enemy is saying to you, whatever he's trying to put on you, he's going to come on him. Yes, yes. So if you will stay, yes. come on, y'all. Whatever the enemy's trying to do, I promise you, it'll go back on his head sevenfold, tenfold, sometime hundredfold. Mm -hmm. But you got to stay. Let yes. God defeat that giant. Yes. I told y'all, I don't have a desire for alcohol or drugs no more. It is completely on, gone. Man. That giant is dead. Right. He ain't never tried to because he's dead, church. Amen. See, Amen. some people, I don't know, you got to cut his head off. Yes. You got to make sure he's dead. So he can't, see, he can't nobody function without a head. Right. That's, right. Right. That's a spiritual yes. thing, church. Think about that. Can't nothing function without a head. Can I get another amen up here? Amen. All right, we're getting there. Y'all just hang with me. Then look at verse 45. Then David said to the listener, you come to me with a sword, you come to me with a spear, you come to me with a shield. If you ever want to face a giant, here it is, y'all. Here's your remedy. David says, I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of heaven, whom you have that power. I'm coming because I got a word for the Lord. I'm coming because you are fixing to go down. I don't care what you say. I don't care what you do. It don't matter. You are fixing to be there, devil. John, you are coming now because I'm coming because I got a word for the Lord. I'm coming. Devil, you done defile God what you shouldn't have done. Think about it, church. My Lord, this is... This is the boldness we need to see. Come on. You've got to have that boldness, y'all, in these latter days we're living in. They don't even want you talking about Jesus on the radio, on the TV. They don't want to mention his name. Be bold. Mention his name anyway. Mention the name of Jesus. Tell people they need to be saved and be born again. This day, this is what David says. He says, this day, the Lord's going to deliver you to my hand. I'm going to smite you, take the head from off you. I'm going to give the carcass of the host of the seeds this day and the vows there. And the wild beasts in the earth and all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Amen. You know why you need to defeat that devil, that giant, that giant that's facing you? To let people know there really is a God. Yes, amen. Y'all, some people cannot believe I'm preaching now. But it goes to testify yes. that there is a God. Yes, yes. Come on, you got a testimony. Yes. 
You're showing people there really is a God. Amen. You're showing them by the way you walk, by the way you talk, by the way you live, by the giants that you face. See, we got a watered down church today. Nobody wants to face a giant. Come on, man. But I'm telling you, God says, face a giant. I got to show somebody something. Can you imagine what the armies of Israel saw when that little boy went out there and faced that giant? Can you imagine the testimony, the witness that they had, they seen in a one young boy who was willing to do what God said? Amen. I'm telling you something now, y'all. Somebody needs you. Somebody needs you to face that giant. Somebody needs to see you stand. Yes. Come on, church. Yes. Somebody needs to see you not quit, not give up. Right. Yes. I could have given up a long time ago, church. Come on. We could come up with any kind of excuse to give up, quit serving God. Somebody needs to see you serving God. Yes. Somebody needs you to see you to face a giant and whoop him and defeat him and cut his head off. Yes. Come on, y'all. Yes. I don't know what giants you're facing in here. Every one of us right now are facing giants. Yes. Amen. We're going to cut his head off in a minute. Come on, y'all. Just get ready. Amen. Cut his head up in here. Amen. Now listen. He says, and all this assembly is going to know that the Lord saves. Amen. Oh, Lord, help me right here. Woo. He says, now this is a revelation knowledge from God today. He, he says that God's going to show y'all today, the Lord's going to show you that he says not with a sword and not with a spear. Right, yeah. Goliath, you are armored up. You've got everything you think you need to defeat me. Oh, Lord, listen. But David says, everybody's going to see this thing. Well, the battle is the Lord's. And he will get you in our hands. Oh, my Lord. Come on, y'all. Stand up. Give the praise. Come on. Come on. Come on. Stand up. Give God the praise. Come on. Give God the praise. David says, listen. You don't know understand this. You're armored up. You got your spirit. You got your sword. God's going to show this whole assembly. God's people, Israel, and even the people who are not belong to God, the enemy. God's going to show both parties both parties, God, listen, here's what he says, y'all. He said, both parties, God should say the battle is the Lord's. Yes. Y'all, in the physical, there's no possible way that David could have beat that giant. He could not have killed a giant in his own, it, it's impossible. That's why I love when God gets you in a place mm -hmm. where it is impossible. Because God is a God of the impossible. Amen. Amen. He can do anything. Some of y'all wonder why y'all got in the place. Good Lord, Lord, this is impossible. I can't do it. God said, that's right, you can't. Now just step aside. Let me show you something. Let me fight this battle for you. You just face the giant, David. David faced that giant. Y'all know the story. He put the, he put the rock in the sling. He began to do this right here. Y'all, that wasn't the one little place in that armor that could kill that giant and brought him down, y'all. It's just a little bitty old hole right up in here. Come on. And that stone had to even be the right size. My Lord, I'm thinking, look, God's grace and mercy. It had to be the right. Yeah, he had to he get that mind, boy. He's going to knock that mind snap out of it. But one little place, one little place that that stone had to go, he's doing this right here. David ain't standing still, y'all. That boy is a running. He's doing this. I believe he got fast pressed in there. Oh, no, I don't get you. Oh, I'm coming. I don't know how far that was apart, but I know he's doing this right here. And all of a sudden, he gets to a show, and the, and the giant's running to you. Oh, come on. They both run into each other. I believe all of a sudden, the Lord said, okay, David, it's time to let that thing go. Shoot. And here goes the stone that's going through the air. I don't know if David is trying to keep up with that stone or not, but I believe he's still running because he knows there's a giant fixing to come down. Oh, somebody help me up in here now. That stone went to the only place it could have possibly went. It went right there. Come on, y'all, went right to his mind. All that junk he'd been speaking, all that stuff, all of a sudden that thing hit right there, and all of a sudden that, that the giant stopped running. Come on, he stopped running, he fell back. He fell back on the ground. You know why? He did. Oh, wait a minute, is he really dead? Wait a minute, is he really dead? See, David said, now come on now. I'm thinking, I'm paraphrasing something, but David said, is this devil really dead? He's seen the giant fall. Some of y'all have seen the giant fall. Come on, some of y'all have seen the giant fall. But you ain't cut his head off. Because you can knock a giant out. You can knock a giant down. You can knock him down for two days, three hours, or whatever. 
You can knock it down, but I'm telling you, you better make sure he did. Because if he's only knocked out, if he's, come on, y'all, if he's just laying back, if he's just waiting for another chance, if he ain't dead, he's going to rise back up, and he's going to cause you more harm. Somebody help me up in here. That's, why we, that's what's wrong with some of the Christians today. they knocked the giant out. They've done it for two or three weeks. Come on. And they find out they're facing him again, but this time he's worse. And instead of the giant going back down, he done got a little more strength, and he's taking the Christian down. Come on, church. you got to do more than just knock it down. you got to do more than just put the giant on his back. No, you got to, when he's down, and you know he's down, you got to go and step on him. Come on, now, And you take his own sword. You take his own word that he was going to destroy you with, and then whack his head off. Somebody help him up in here. You kill the giant. How many of you need to kill a giant? Come on. How many need to kill a giant? Come on. How many of you need to kill a giant? Get your sword out. Get your sword out. Speak to it. Come on, church. Kill the giant. We're going to kill the giant. Come on, y'all do this. Everybody in the world still trying to do this. Come on. Jared, you ready, brother? Come on, brother. You ready? Come on, brother. Are you left-handed? Huh? My gosh, he's that amazing. He's left-handed. Left-handed people have an accuracy with stuff. Yes. Come on, brother. Come on up here. We don't kill a giant, brother. You need to kill a giant. We don't kill a giant. My brother, you need to kill a giant. We don't kill Y'all keep on. Don't stop. Come on. This man of God, we need to kill a giant together. Sometimes I think we need some help. Jerry, I need your help. You need mine, brother. Let's do this. You ready? Come on, y'all. Y'all ready? Yeah, ready? All right, let's let that rock go now. Let's stop going. Shoot. All right, okay. Now, let me tell you. The devil's down. The giant is laying down. Jerry, what are we going to do, brother? What are we going to do now? He's down. Step on. Amen. That's right, brother. That's what we're going to do. And that giant you've been facing, brother, today, I'm telling you right now, we're going to get his head off. You're not here by accident, brother. I'm telling you right now, that giant's been raising up, and it's time to cut his head off, brother. We've knocked him out a few times. We went to battle with him sometimes. Let's cut his head off, brother. You ready to cut his head off? Church, how many ready to cut the devil's head off? Let's cut it off right now. Devil, you come at us with a, with a sword and a spear. But we come at you with the word of the Lord. The word of God says this, church, I am delivered. I am set free. Jerry, today, you are set free, brother. You are delivered from any giant in your life that's trying to stop you. I need you to quit. In the name of Jesus. Cut it off, cut it off, brother. Cut it off. There, Jerry, right now. That devil right now. That giant is going down. He's down, brother. Everybody in here right now. Jared, I'm here with you right now, brother. We cut his head. His head is gone. That desire is gone. It's gone in the name of Jesus. Say, we cut your head off right now, John. We cut your head off. No more. No more. No more in the name of Jesus. I always speak your word. Greater is he that sent thee than he that's in this world. Father, I thank you for your blood that cleanses and covers right now. I thank you for your blood. Father, I thank you for the spirit of the living God that's in this man, Father. I thank you for the calling you have on his life, Father. Lord God, I praise you, Father. I thank you right now as you believe in God every step that is taken, Father. Everything the enemy has brought against him right now, we, can, we, we destroy it, Father. We destroy it. We send that word back to the enemy in the name of Jesus. He is a man of God. He is a man of faith. He is a man like David that's going to stand. That's going to stand. Your word by your word. Lord, I thank you, Father. You said this is, he is a man of God. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you. Lord, we praise you right now. Church, come on, give God some praise. I mean, it's a nice little time. Come on. Come on, church. He's standing. Come on. Y'all come, give him a hug. Come on, y'all, come on. Some of you may come over here and get Jared a hug. Come on, come on, y'all, give, give Jared a hug. Y'all just give him a hug. Y'all, I don't care what giant it is. That giant's going down and he's defeated. Cut his head off. Don't let him rise up no more. We serve a good God, y'all. We serve an awesome God. We serve a God who can do anything. Because
because He is the great I am. He is the Lord God Almighty. He's God and there is no other. 